Everybody, welcome back to Wicked Good Sports. This is Power Play, and we're joined, as always, by Chris Huminski. Chris, how you doing? I am... I'm doing okay, Brian. How are you doing? I'm doing quite well, and I'm interested to hear about, uh, surprisingly, a lot of Bruins stuff happening in the last few days here. Uh, we had some trades, and, uh, you know, I'm interested to hear what your thoughts are on those. Yeah, so let's let's start with that. Um... Bruins fans got some very difficult news uh, just the other day. Um, we have traded Taylor Hall and Nick Foligno uh, to the Blackhawks for uh, some prospects and uh, and a couple of defensemen. Yeah, so, you know, we, we joke around like Taylor Hall was the beginning of the show. So the, the first chapter – of power play is over and now the Taylor Hall is no longer a Bruins. Yes, it is. Yes, it is. So how surprised are you that the Bruins made this move, given, I guess, the success they had last season, but then the looming uh, salary cap situation? that was kind of Yeah, so based solely on the salary cap situation, I'm not surprised that this happened. We knew that some bigger names were probably going to get moved in the offseason. There's probably still more to come, too. That's kind of why the the first round exit hurt even more because it felt like this was the year, right? I don't know. No. <laughs> yeah, no, oh, we're right. it's not looking good for having Patrice Bergeron and David Krejci next year. That's that's on the horizon. But um, it does sound so. Trading Taylor Hall frees up a ton of cap space, which is nice. It's looking like they're trying to hold on to Tyler Bertuzzi which my whole opinion of this trade is going to be based on whether or not we can keep Tyler Bertuzzi. If we can keep Tyler Bertuzzi with the cap space that letting Taylor Hall and Nick Foligno go is going to free up, then the whole thing works. If we can't keep Tyler Bertuzzi either, it's a, it's a bust. It's a waste. All right. So in a few weeks, when we find that out, we'll be back here to either celebrate this trade or to uh, throw our hands up and discuss. Yeah, yes. <laughs> oh, man. So as far as what the Bruins got back, is there anybody who's really, like, s- stands out to you, or is it really just kind of like, a, well, maybe they'll become something type of prospects? Um, well, the only guy who stands out at all, I guess, is Ian Mitchell. Um, and the only reason he stands out is that he played for Jim Montgomery before. Okay. Either, so in, either in, like, high school or college, one of those, he played for Jim Montgomery. Gotcha. So maybe a Montgomery guy in one way or another. Yeah. So that'll be interesting to see. Um, well, I guess let's touch a little bit on where do you th- see like the Bruins making more cuts? Like you, you said already that you weren't sure if they're going to keep Krejci, but if you had to like plant a flag and say, okay, this is what the Bruins are going to do the rest of the off season. What, what do you think? All right, so Patrice Bergeron and David Krejci are both going to retire this offseason. That's the writings on the wall for that one. I'm expecting either Jeremy Swayman or Linus Allmark to be to be traded too. Um, we're probably going to get the best value for Linus Allmark because Linus Allmark just just won the Vesna, and we're going to talk about that in a little bit probably. Um, I'm also expecting Dmitry Orlov's probably not going to stay. Um, but I think the next big name that I'm expecting to see go is going to be either uh, Swayman or Olmark. All right. So, I mean, no more goalie hugs. That'll be sad. Um, that was, you know, a big part of this this season, right? And Yeah. yeah. So, it's tough. But, uh, yeah. I'd like, to, I'd like to see it kept together, but I'm not expecting it. I'm not getting my hopes up. Yeah, no, the Bruins have to – Kind of like manage the very difficult in any sport where you're like still trying to compete well, like rebuilding on the side rather than tearing it all down. So we'll see how that goes. But for now, we get some stuff to celebrate, right, Chris? Yes, we do. Um, in light of the sadness of the Taylor of the Taylor Hall trade, um, the NHL awards were a couple of nights ago, and. I was excited for these ones because the NHL awards, they celebrate the regular season. Right. Um, <laughs> the, the highlight of this whole season for us. The regular right. season. 
And as far as that goes, there were not a lot of surprises. Connor, Mc, Connor McDavid's the MVP. Um, yeah. But David David Pasternak it did get second place in voting for for MVP. Yeah. It was, <laughs> do you want to say what the breakdown of first place <laughs> votes was? So for the people who get a vote for in the in the NHL awards, Connor McDavid won unanimously for MVP except for one. Only one person did not vote for for Connor McDavid to be MVP. This particular person we suspect voted for him to be fifth. <laughs> but this particular <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> but that's what makes it funny because this particular individual voted for David Pasternak to be MVP. Which, yeah. if for all of the Bruins faithful out there, we all know who it was, and that's our and that's our boy Jack Edwards. See <laughs> how true. Like it's a very Jack Edwards thing to do to like the obvious MVP. I'm gonna he's fifth on my list. No, no, no. I gotta go. Yeah. Gotta go my guy. <laughs> so- but that did mean that he got second place in the voting technically. That's so insane. So, is unanimous MVPs common in the NHL or? Uh, lately, yes. Right. But that's just because Connor McDavid has been <laughs> has been ridiculous. Yeah. Since since he's been in the league. But yeah. some other some other notable ones: uh, Rookie of the Year, the Calder Trophy. That's Matty Beniers. He from the Seattle Kraken. That's not a surprise. He was a show in mm-hmm. for that. Right. Very and good. that. Speaking speaking of shoe ins, um, as Patrice Bergeron has his sixth Selkie Trophy. Yeah, so you know maybe going out on top. Yeah, yeah, for the best for the best two way player in the game. Which You're at this point you think he should? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah they sorry. need to they need to just name it after him at this point. He's retiring this offseason. Next year, next year it's the bird it's the Bergeron. Yeah, has anyone won it as often as he is? Um, this particular award, no. Yeah. So, but he, and he's only one of a few NHL players to have won one award six times. Yeah. So, I mean, I agree with you. They should, they should name it after him. Y- yes. And then, I guess, just for the Bruins, Jim Montgomery got Coach of the Year. Which I'm, I'm not, su- I'm not surprised much by that one. I think he had some stiff conversations. Competition from Dave Haxtall, who coaches uh, Seattle. And then Linus Olmark won the Vesna for the top goalie. I already mentioned that. And Olmark and Swayman got the award for the best um, for the best tandem in the in the league, too. Yeah, that, that seemed like an easy choice. Yeah, that's that's a that's a no-brainer. Yeah. So um how often do the coaches of the team that win the president cup win the best coach of the year is it like pretty much a hand in hand thing or it's not always hand in hand a lot of it has to do with the fact that this was jim montgomery's first year with the bruins um dave if it weren't for that i think dave haxtall would have won because the seattle kraken are the seattle kraken right. and they're an expansion team they're kicking ass right so yeah, you know, congratulations to all the Bruins out there for winning the awards. You know, it, it was a little bit of a, you know, bright end to a to a dark at least postseason. What postseason? Yeah, exactly. It doesn't even matter. What postseason? And you know, we don't have to think about the postseason anymore because the next season has pretty much started. Uh, we got the NHL draft happening right now. Uh, any thoughts on yes. what's happened so far? Um, so no surprise. Uh, first overall pick, Chicago Blackhawks took Connor Bedard. Connor Bedard has been the talk of of the hockey universe for the last couple of years. He's finally draft eligible this year. He's been playing in the juniors um, up in Canada. And one of the big storylines this year was, well, whoever has the number one pick this year is going to get Connor Bedard. So you saw all these teams basically tanking so they could get that number one pick. Yeah, right. <laughs> and it, it ends up the Blackhawks. Blackhawks. Yes. So, um, a fun week for their fans. Um, 
Shout yeah, out. it is. And yeah. you know what? I'm happy that Taylor Hall is going to get to play with Connor Bedard. Mm-hmm. That would be fun for sure. So, for um... <laughs> <laughs> All right. Anything else about the draft you want to touch on? Um, no. Let me see. I'm only tuning in right now. I don't even know if the Bruins have picked yet. Yeah. Probably not. The Bruins, have, the Bruins have the Bruins have not picked yet. Um, another notable name that looks like was taken was Adam Fantilli. Mm-hmm. Um, he went number. He went third overall. Um, he's a left lefty shot center. The Blue Jackets need a center, so that's going to be a good guy for them to have. Mm-hmm. And then the San Jose Sharks looks like drafted a person by the name of Will Smith. All right. Hey, Will Smith, congratulations. Yes, the fresh prince of mm-hmm. of San Jose. <laughs> yeah, if I know anything from uh, Will Smith, the former NFL player, uh, reservations, when you show up and you're not the other Will Smith, people will be disappointed. So yep. just be prepared for that. <laughs> yep. Well, maybe, maybe, maybe this, uh, maybe this Will Smith will have the same kind of hands as the other one. Maybe, maybe. Which is a good skill to have if you're playing hockey. It definitely <laughs> is. <laughs> oh man! All right, guys. Anything that we didn't touch on that you wanted to? Um, there's one more thing. Just some news I got today. All signs are pointing to the return of Milan Lucic to the Boston Bruins. Let's go. Which I How long is it been? It's been a while. It's been, Jesus. He was, I think, twenty fourteen was the last. Oh my God. Was his last season? It's been, a, it's been a minute. Nine years ago. That I don't want to hear that, Chris. That makes me feel old. It's been, a, it's been a minute. Yeah. Damn, I wouldn't. So I'm keeping, I'm keeping long. my eye on that. Free agency starts on Saturday, so. Oh. We will we will see how that goes. We'll if, if, Luch come, if Luch comes back, I'll be very I'll be thrilled. Yeah. So uh, obviously, very exciting time. So yeah, we got free agency starting soon. We'll obviously be covering that. But uh, other than that, what's the roadmap look like for this NHL off season? Um, retirements, trades, and signings. And, and we'll be here to cover all of those as they come up. As well as, you know, it's not too far away. We got, what, um, two and a half, three months, and then we're right back at it. Yes. Yes, that's right. That's right. right. Well, anything you want to plug? Uh, yep, I got my t- I got my my Twitter, which is at Chris, uh, Chris underscore Uminski. Then I have my, tic- my TikTok, too, which is at Chris Uminski. And yes. we're getting closer. We're getting closer. The talks are happening. Mm-hmm. Um, we are going to bring back the Hartford Whalers. That's at Whalers Revival for your daily updates on my mission to bring back the Hartford Whalers. Yes. So please go follow that effort and Chris on uh, the other social media as well. And uh, other than that, you can follow the channel on pretty much all social media. Search Wicked Good Sports. And then... As if I didn't have enough stuff that I make, I had to I had to go and make something new, because uh, I'm I'm, it's impossible for me to ever sit still at, for too long. So I've added another project. Uh, it's called Slow News Week. It's to it's to keep my joke writing sharp, you know, to, to uh, keep it going. Uh, so that is just. As, uh, as one person described it, oh, it's kind of like the Weekend Update, but shittier, which, you know, I'll take it. I'll take it. Um, <laughs> so go follow that channel again, Slow News Week. Uh, I'm try- I'm going to try to do a weekly upload and then, like, cut out the segments into shorts to, like, fill out all the other days. But, uh, yeah. Other than that, you can follow me on Twitter at the TheFakeBeMarn, that's B-M-A-R-R. And uh, we'll see you in the next one, Chris. Thank you so much for your time. All right. Thank you. Bye, everyone.